Well, in this video, we're going to be talking with one of the world's leading YouTube experts to dig deeper into the process that anyone, including you, can leverage to drive views, build an audience, and grow revenue. If you've dreamed of building an audience, uh, your audience, your influence, your income using YouTube at use, uh, using YouTube as a part of that strategy, then you're in the right place. Well, hello there. My name is Daniel. Uh, I am turning off some background audio so we can get clear and in the clear. Again, my name is Daniel. I'm a video expert, video creator here at Uscreen, one of the best places to learn how to start and grow your online video streaming business. I'm so glad you're here today. So, so glad you're here today. This is going to be a really fun conversation. If you're new, if you've never been on this channel before, welcome. We're so glad to have you. I'd love to go ahead and introduce my co-host for today. He's actually the founder and CEO of Uscreen. We're so thrilled to have him with us. So everyone help me welcome PJ to today's live stream. All right, Daniel, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for uh, giving an awesome introduction. And everyone, thank you for joining this awesome live stream today where we have a special guest for you. Oh, yeah. So we're excited about Daryl joining here in a few moments. Yeah, Daryl will be with us just in a minute. He was getting his microphone set up when I last saw him. So we're super excited. Um, now, I, I love YouTube, uh, like love it. Um, I didn't always love YouTube or, you know, I kind of grew up with it, but I didn't know I loved kind of the behind the scenes until recently. And now I'm to the point where I could probably talk about it all the time and not get sick of it. I, I tried to tone it down at work and at home because not everyone wants to hear that. But <laughs> I've, you know, I've been making videos since I was a teenager, I think. I made my first video when I was 13 or 14 with some friends. I started editing with Sony Vegas, which I don't even know if they still make Sony wow. Vegas. Um, that was a long, long time ago. So I love video and I'm sure I could fill an entire live stream with everything that I've personally learned from helping run Uscreen's YouTube channels in the last you know, one to two years. But even all those experiences and all those incredible things that I've learned in that time pales uh in comparison to what the experts really know because i'm far 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 from an expert so today you know we want to help you with your youtube journey so we went after you know the big heavy hitter because we wanted to make sure that you would walk away from this live stream better than when you got here better than when you found it and that's that's kind of the goal with any any content that we create at uscreen is that we want you to walk away with something better than what you had when you started and that's such a big big part of our goal. So while we're waiting for Daryl, I'm just going to kind of chat him up a little bit. He's the CEO of a video marketing and strategy company uh, that's out of um, Utah, where I think Daryl lives. He's the founder of Vid Summit, which is an annual event in Los Angeles for video creators and video marketers, which Uscreen loves uh, being a part of Vid Summit every year for the last few years. Uh, I didn't get to go last year uh, because of COVID. Uh, You're going to be going this year. We're going to have some fun there. I really, really hope I get to go because there's so many great speakers, such great content that comes out of Vid Summit. Mm -hmm. I, I set aside days for the last two years just to watch and consume and take notes on all that content and notes on all the things that people in our industry are learning and that they're doing and then applying that to you know my own content creation strategy. So Daryl is the founder of Vid Summit. He's helped more than 20 YouTube channels go from zero to over a million subscribers. Let that kind of let that sink in. Like zero, he's taking them from zero, helped take them from zero to a million subscribers on over 20 channels. And he's helped generate a whopping more than a whopping 50 billion views on YouTube. So without further ado, without much more pomp and circumstance, I want to go ahead and welcome Daryl Eves to today's live stream. Daryl, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. <laughs> awesome. So, to have you. Clarification, it's now 25 uh, that, channels that we've started zero to getting a million subscribers each on a plan. Wow, wow. And we're at 61 billion video views now. So wow. I, I guess times change as we get a little bit better. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw you tweet that uh, yesterday or the day before that another channel had broken that barrier. So yeah, that's number 25. Yeah. It's amazing. So. Uh, well, we're so grateful to have you with us today. Thank you for taking the time out of what I know is a very busy, busy schedule to join PJ and myself and, and talk about this. And I know you guys go back a little bit. How did you guys first meet, actually? 
Yeah. So um, PJ reached out to me a long time ago. He's interested in Vid Summit. And I'll be honest with you. I was like, okay, I like to look to, and meet. And I, I was really curious because he's like, hey, I got some stuff going on here that you need to take a look at. And when I saw the tech, I was like, okay, we, we got to talk. Things need to happen here, whatever. And um, before you know it, we just, we just uh, became partners, you know, in, in Vid Summit, of course, like he, he actually helps Vid Summit. Like we couldn't do Vid Summit without um, the tech because so many people want to see the replays and the live streams and everything. And it's all built in and we have our own app. Like, come on, like it doesn't get much better than that. And so, uh, but no, it's been a great relationship and it's been great to see the success of the company, you know, over, over the last year and a half, two years, you know, of just how it's, just, he had that idea and had a few things going and it just, went like that so i think mean, that's that's great so i appreciate that daryl it's you know absolute pleasure working with you and your advice is always to the point and um a lot of good feedback so i, I thought i was long-winded i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i'm like to the point but <laughs> I love it. Well, we have a, a lot to dig through today. Uh, so be sure to stick around to the end of our conversation because we're going to do a little bit of a giveaway, which I, I'm not sure even we told Daryl about yet, but we're going to do that for a bunch of you. So let's go ahead and dig in, but be sure to stick around. If you didn't know, Daryl recently released this book, hey, which look at that. I highly, highly recommend. I finished it not too long ago, and it's kind of the foundation for a bit of our conversation today. So if you haven't read the book, highly highly recommend it um you can check it out ytformula.com it's available on amazon and a bunch of other outlets as well but pretty sure daryl you can correct me if i'm wrong if you buy it on ytformula.com that comes with some bonus content as well or is that regardless yeah, like, of where you buy it yeah like go buy it from where you want to buy it from there is an option now that you can get the bonuses it's just a you know different price so you don't have to buy the books so you might you know go for whatever but yeah if you buy it from yt formula um, you know, you get the book and the training and stuff like that, but you know, we don't want to penalize you. I just want to give you content. So like, <laughs> just come in yeah. YT formula. You can either do it, you know, if you bought it on Amazon or whatever. So awesome. And the book, even with, I have the, the access to the bonus stuff and it's amazing, but the book is amazing even without that. So if you, if you're picking one or the other, they're both fantastic. So let's go ahead and move on. Daryl in the book, you kind of, uh, break things up into three sections. You kind of talk about the platform the opportunity and then the formula. So in the context of the platform where we're going to start, I loved the the time that you spent to the backstory and the context in the history of YouTube, because I think a lot of people don't know and they don't understand that part of YouTube's story. And I would love it if you could share why you think it's important for creators to understand, understand those beginnings and the backstory of the YouTube platform. Yeah, so I'm a huge history buff. I love history and I'm fascinated by it, not necessarily from the history itself, but the impact that it made on decisions of the future. And I truly do believe if you ever want to improve your current state and also your future state, understanding the, the past will help you navigate the present and, and it'll put you on the right path for the future. And so that's a huge thing for me. And then two, um, like most people don't know that YouTube didn't start out as a video sharing platform. It was a dating website. And based off of what their history was, actually improved the way that they were able to go from zero to $1.65 billion and sell to, to Google in, in about a year, a year and, you know, some change. Um, and it was because they were able to use the YouTube formula, what I teach. And it's, it's just basically a way to put a plan out there, execute on the plan, analyze and adjust. And I thought the best way to start the book was, of course, do the introduction and then have Mr. Beast, you know, do his little forward, but literally share that story because that is what what we really need to learn from is when you get data you need to be able to analyze it and so i thought that's the best way to start the to to understand what youtube is and the decisions that they made along the way and i wanted to show about the the ecosystem and why they look at the ecosystem a certain way you know how they're engaging with each part of the ecosystem and how it creates friction with others and you know the the whole 
juggling of what YouTube is, and then ultimately understanding, okay, if that's where it's at and that's the direction they're going, then what is the algorithm and what is the, the, the decision-making power behind YouTube, which is an AI and how did it get to that point? And what I really love is, you know, you know how they were just always testing and improving, testing and improving, testing and improving. Um, it pretty much sets up the whole book because once you understand, here's how YouTube operates and what their history is and why they did it to this, this, these, these things, um, you can see why they chose to go a certain route. Um, and I'm so glad they went that route because as soon as they switched to an AI, that's when the YouTube formula was actually existed because before it was off of metrics that didn't make any sense but now an ai is just predicting what people want to watch and when you have data points and know how to go to it then that's where the opportunity comes in and that's where part two is we talk about the opportunity of the book uh in depth and and then part three is the the youtube formula so yeah i love that so you mentioned the algorithm and that's I mean, I feel like the algorithm is always kind of one of the hot topics around YouTube. People always want to know how to hack the algorithm because they want, like many people, they want a short shortcut to success. But that's generally not the right way to go about things. And the better approach is to try and understand the algorithm, not hack your way through it, right? But yeah. to use the knowledge and the understanding that you get from trying to understand it and taking that to inform your strategy. So I think most people actually might find it a little bit surprising, maybe even a little bit intimidating that there's not just one algorithm that's fueling YouTube, right? There are multiple algorithms. And so oh, yeah. I'd love it if you could give us some insight to how to approach understanding the, the multiple algorithms and how they factor into a, a content creation strategy, especially for somebody who's more unseasoned. Uh, on the creator yeah, side. and I think I have a lot of credibility when it comes to this because I started out trying to hack algorithms. You know, uh, my whole my whole thing basically when Google was coming on and all these directories are out there and search engines, my company was trying to manipulate and getting our results to rank higher than anybody else, and that's something that I understood. Um, but there's a pain point that always came with it. When there's a hack, they fix the hack. They they do a patch, right? Um, and, and it was just ups and downs and sideways. And I literally hated Matt cuts. He's the anti spam czar. Like he, he was literally my arch nemesis. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just hated the, the guy. And then we'd go to these conferences and he was there. And I was, I was like staring him down. Cause like he made my life miserable, you know? And the, the essence was when I took a step back and I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, isn't it better to understand the goal of what they're trying to achieve and be in line with that goal? And when I actually did that, I literally exploded on all, all different aspects of it because I was giving them what they wanted instead of trying to find the, the, the exploit to take me where I needed to be. Now, fast forward to YouTube, YouTube's no different. You know, yeah, there, there always has been ways to, to do things, but those are, aren't sustainable. And especially when uh, 2012 hit, they did an experiment to switch over to uh, uh, an, an AI, artificial intelligence that controls the algorithms. Um, then that's when it went upside down. They just did a test and it just was off the roof of predicting what people wanted to watch. And then in 2013 is when they switched over uh, from InnerTube. InnerTube was their, their, their little project to Google Brain and coming into um, what we, we currently have YouTube to today. And so going into it, um, it's really simple to be in line. And that's why I wrote the book is because uh, once you take the complexities out of everything and realize, hey, if people actually like your stuff and and you're not, you know, trying to go out to everyone and be all, you know, you're trying to go for a specific audience and you understand who that audience is. We break that down in the book. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and once you do that, then YouTube does its thing, because what the whole purpose of the algorithm is, or the algorithm, I'm sorry, the, the AI is, is to predict what people want to watch and keep them on the platform longer. And if you're bringing them onto the platform, keeping them on longer, which is watching video after video after video, and they're active viewers of it, YouTube realizes, oh, here's some patterns between the, this viewer relationship. Let's go out and find more people like that. And I, I'm telling you, um, that's the system that works every single time. When, we, uh, when we've generated 61 billion video views on YouTube, a billion was just dumb luck. I'm not going to take credit for that at all. They're just dumb luck. I can't uh, associate any 
any knowledge is just like, okay, that was weird. You know, that was one of those things, but 60 billion of them was using the system that I teach in the book. And, and it, it, all it is, is um, understanding that the algorithm and the algorithm is a traffic source and the algorithms, you know, is, is plural. Uh, but the AI is all it's trying to do is, is predict people and how people behave with content and how people behave on YouTube. And when you understand that and you know, the data points, then, you know, you pretty much know the YouTube formula. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's okay if uh, you only have 60 billion views that you will take credit for. I think there's still some legitimacy in that, Daryl. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know. It was dumb luck. I'll just take it. I'll take it. <laughs> we'll take luck when luck is there for that's sure. That's true. So. Now, moving into talking a little bit about the opportunity, PJ, I know that you are really passionate about creating and sharing opportunities for creators, right? It's a big part of what motivated you to create Uscreen and to, to build this company that we're, we both work for uh, in the first place. But I think that that love and that passion of helping creators or and creating opportunities for them extends just beyond or beyond Uscreen, right? Like it also applies to YouTube creators, which make up a number of our clients, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, like a personal goal has always been helping people. I love helping people. And one of the ways you can help people, I learned this when I was young, is to give them a job. But the next level of that, right, is they're making money. So I see it the same way. We help businesses, creators, influencers make money. And we love YouTube. YouTube helps our business and all these other platforms help our business. There's so many ways to create content. There's so many ways to monetize content. So I absolutely see helping the creators generate income and uh, build an audience and really own their platform as uh, part of what we do and what all these other uh, platforms do as well. And uh, Daryl, one of my favorite things you mentioned in the book uh, is actually, you know, taking personal responsibility for your content. Like one of the favorite lines that I took away from uh, the book that made me laugh was uh, it said, maybe your baby is ugly. And um, <laughs> I enjoyed that. But, you know, the truth is that uh, creators on YouTube, even Uscreen customers uh, were, were constantly analyzing um, the content initially really, uh, it's it's really hard to create good content. And there's a part in the book, and I think Mr. B says this, that the first 100 videos, like you need to create 100 videos before you actually start to realize that you're doing good. And every video you create, you look at your previous videos and you see that you're getting better and better. I really like how you put that because it initially gives all of us confidence because uh, this was me for me personally launching my own YouTube channel. And even when you, uh, YouTube started, Daniel uh, struggled initially as well. I think everyone has. It's hard to make content look good, get the right technical environment set up, get the lighting, and then be presentable on camera and even know what you're talking about. Um, so there's definitely those uh, pitfalls. What advice do you have would you give to people um, to kind of avoid these types of issues starting out? Well, um, stop making videos for yourself and think that you're making videos for someone else and that someone has to watch it and it's their first impression of you. <laughs> um, there's so many creators that just create to create and they demand that the, this is the best thing that ever existed for all of humanity. But in reality, they weren't thinking of all of humanity when they created the content. They were just being a creator creating it for themselves. And so they shouldn't expect millions of views. They should only expect one view, their view. And so when you realize that there's someone in, at the end of it, you're going to be more conscientious about how they're going to react and how they're going to anticipate and how they're going to engage, where they're going to dis disconnect. And when you do that, that is the, the game changer. And I, I do believe that you don't need the highest quality of production. Like what, what you need to do is create a unique value that it is that proposition that's going to be transferred via video to a viewer. And they're going to go, oh, my gosh, I really like this. Because I've seen channels just take off where they just pull out their phone and start recording. And it's horrible, windy audio. But the value's there. You know, and that value is connecting and, you know, they're they're doing something that that the audience loves and then they're able to replicate it again. 
Um, and that's, that's where sustainable growth comes is when you can actually almost predict how the viewers will re really engage with your content. Um, and I'm not saying like, like I want you to create as a creator, if that's what it is, but like any uh, creator or entertainment, they, they actually need to bring the value to, to the viewer or you just, they don't, they just lose and disconnect. And that's, that's actually uh, a showcase in Hollywood, you know, when there's like this mega, you know, movie and you just have this writer director that just blows you out of the park and then they put out another piece of crappy content. And you're like, well, what happened? What was the difference? Well, you know, there, there's an audience that's engaged um, with that content too. And there's all, all this, all these things that you have to take into consideration, but don't overcomplicate it. Just think of who would this impact um, and how's the value going to be transferred? And then what's the best way to do that in a short amount of time? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm not saying that um, that that you can't make long videos, but people only have an inf you know a, a small amount of time to engage with your value. And until you prove to them that the value is there, they're never going to stay on longer. Um, and that could be, hey, there there might be a podcast. There's a podcast I listen to. It's like three hours. Um, I'll sit on it because I know what I'm going to get and I know that it's going to be entertaining and it's going to be thought provoking and so on and so forth. And it's worth three hours of my time. I've already made that call. But one of those videos that I was able to find was able to prove that to me and it made a great first impression. And I like, hey, I really enjoy this. And so, you know, I'm an active, active viewer. And so that's kind of where, where I go um, is like really creating content for people and not yourself. Uh, but take pride and joy in creating content for other people. And I think that, that will help you as a content creator. Really useful advice. Thanks for that, Daryl. Now, it's hard to talk about YouTube without talking about making money, right? Oftentimes, a lot of people are starting their YouTube journeys to make money, right? And um, one of the things that you even say in your book about the YouTube partner program is there's some really good case studies and a lot of people making big money on and off YouTube. But here's my question. Where do you think most of the people go wrong with monetizing their content on YouTube? And what do you think are the biggest missed opportunities for monetizing off or beyond YouTube? So I love this and where I've been on YouTube since pretty much day one. I mean, I, I was this, like, they, they came out in May. I was in October of 2005. Um, I saw a lot of people come onto the space that that grew an audience and got views and they got paid in that in that um, in that cycle where they needed more views to make more money. And and so they were doing some, you know, hacks to, to make that happen. And until that happened, they were always scrambling. And I can't tell you how many people would reach out to me and says, Daryl, like like I, I, I need money. You know, I like like here it was. And, you know, I was up in my ups and now I'm down in the downs and I can't even take care of my own mortgage. I got to go back to work, mm -hmm. you know, and that that right there always concerned me. And so anytime I dealt with a client or a channel, it's like it's all about money first. And I know that that's really hard for a lot of content creators to do it. But this is a business. And if you treat it like a business, you can still be artistic and creative and do all those things. But then you're not a starving artist, you know, the ups and downs and sideways, you don't want that. And so um, I always tr take the 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 approach of the ad revenue that's generated on YouTube is just you know, icing on the cake, you know, and, and really treat it as that instead of your only source of income. Uh, and so some of the biggest mistakes is, oh, only if I can get monetized and only if I can do that. Well, think of other ways to, to generate money coming in. Um, and that's why I wrote section two of the book is I wanted to give you opportunities that, that existed. Um, and <laughs> those opportunities are real. And the real case studies from all the different backgrounds of where where it's at, and um, you know, most most creators are like, oh, only if I can get more views, so I can make more money on my ad revenue, and then also if I can get that brand deal, and that's great. But what if you could become your own brand deal, you know, and you own the product mm -hmm. and you can leverage that with your audience? I mean, that's where it gets interesting. And so, I, I think the 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 biggest thing though. Um, and this is where you guys like knock it out of the park, which is I want to own the data. Like YouTube doesn't give you the data. They could cancel you at any time. They could literally 
cancel you out and you're gone, you're host. Okay. So to diversify that is as you grow an audience, start building that audience off platform. Mm -hmm. And if you own the data, which is the most valuable thing you can own, which is name, address, email address, and someone that actually are passionate about you, but more importantly, the credit card, right? You have all that other stuff. <clears throat> and then you can actually integrate it in into a, a unique way. And so I always like to create a plan of how we're going to become uh, profitable by X amount of time without ad revenue. And, and one mm -hmm. of the first things that I always do is like, okay, how can we own the data? Because with that, you can do so much more. Um, I want to give you one example of this because I think a lot of people um, are, are just freaked out. They're like, well, I, I don't know how to do it. Well, I had a, a student of mine who only had a thousand subscribers. And I wonder how many of you right now in comments, put if you have a thousand subscribers or less. And his goal was, um, hey, we want to we want to make money at this, right? And and he thought I just need a lot of views and visibility. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Let's just look for what the opportunities are. And so he actually was looking for he he took a, a portion of his day um, where he was actively looking for brand deals, okay? Because brand deals are great. And he came across one that not only would they give him money to do a video, but they'd also do sustainable money coming in as people signed up. Um, and his goal was to make uh, a five figures, you know, um, brand deal um, and, and to be able to go from that. And what was really interesting is he was making uh, on, a, on a thousand subscribers, he was making well over five figures uh, every single month. And not only did it sustain him all during COVID last year, um, but it's sustaining him and his family now. You know, mm -hmm. and his, 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 his channel grew. And as his channel grew, guess what happened to the other thing? He was able to do more more of those deals, and so you don't don't pigeonhole yourself into that. Um, and and the 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 whole thing is look for those opportunities. And I think that's where I you know I've always been bullish with you guys. It's just like this is the the best of all worlds because you can own the data, you you know you can give them value. It's on par where hey you can get exclusive access and all this other stuff. It's just great. And so there's just several ways. That's why I used uh, part two to give you tons of case studies of actual people that I've worked with um, and, and giving their examples of how they'd be able to, to monetize. Awesome. Yeah. I love that, Daryl. Yeah, one complements the other. And there's so much opportunity for monetization on and off the platform. So I appreciate you uh, sharing that with us. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I loved all of those case studies. I've been watching Lucas the Spider for a few years because I, <laughs> I have I have a almost four year old right now. And yeah. uh, when you're prime you audience right there <laughs> exactly and when you mentioned they sold eight hundred thousand dollars worth of plush spiders i came home from reading that and told my wife i was like number one i have to learn how to animate number two we have to get, <laughs> we have to get luke to voice over the animation and then we're going to sell plush toys <laughs> there you go there you go and, and she she just laughed at me but i think one of my favorite chapters in the book uh is probably the one about using your influence to make a difference uh, it's actually probably one of my favorite things about you, Daryl, even though I don't know you on a personal level, but just from what I've seen is that you're consistently leveraging your influence for the benefit of others. And right. I actually heard that in a speaker at church once say that, that that is the definition of leadership. So thank you for continuing to set a good example with all you do with Vid Summit and The Chosen and YouTube and, um, and your personal agency, people like PJ, myself everyone watching we're all better off because you're leveraging your influence to help people like us so just a little personal thank you uh, I, I wanted to throw that. in there thank you absolutely now hey if you're watching this if you're getting value out of this go ahead and hit that like button below that would be a huge favor for us and we'd be grateful for that now let's move on and talk about the formula because i think kind of like people want to hack their way through <sighs> the algorithm they want to hack their way to the formula and yeah. uh there's a lot to unpack, right? Like there, there's so much to unpack. And so I think the biggest thing is what is the YouTube formula? Well, it's a data centered human formula. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, how, how do humans respond to your content? And what are the data points that you need to look at? You know? And so I, I love it because I've always been a student of history and a student of people and how they react. And, 
even at a young age, I don't know if you caught that story. I mean, I was I was doing surveys about Super Bowl commercials when I was 10. I was like, okay, like what was your favorite commercial? And I just noticed, hey, there's a pattern that the Cowboys, they actually like the Budweiser commercials and these other people like this commercial. And it's just like, this is really weird. This is interesting. But that's what I used to do when I was 10 years old. So like, I've always been <laughs> obsessed with it. Um, but the, I think that the essence is, is people respond well uh, to great content and in human nature, um, they like to, to amplify it. So I can guarantee you someone has sent you a meme or a video via, you know, DM text message on Twitter. They tagged you somewhere just because they know you'd like it. And you might not even have liked it fully, but you, you know, you like it like right now. I mean, I can guarantee you, I, I have a, 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 a TikTok from my daughter who's the star Wars nut. I'm a star Wars nut. If you can't tell, I got a star Wars poster back there, but it's like, like I, she, we're sending that daily because we know that that's our entertainment. And that's what the great thing about YouTube is, is all these interactions and things that happen naturally, YouTube's able to pick up those patterns and see patterns that we can't even see. And, and then when you're able to, to leverage that in a way then you can actually grow in, in a very sustainable way. And um, some of the things that, that YouTube looks at is, Hey, what happens when someone sees, you know, your title and thumbnail, that's called an impression, right? And, you know, how, how much do they engage with it? And when they see it on the homepage, you know, what is that click through rate percentage, which is some of the data points that we're able to see as creators is, oh, that, that thumbnail underperformed. And so we need to, to go back and do it. Now, I used an example of a, of a creator um, that, that pretty much owns the internet. He got a billion video views this last month, which is Mr. Beast. He wrote the forward to the book. Um, but he, when he releases a video, it's like 87% click through. Like, how do you compete with that? Like 87% of the people that see it click on it. And so it's like, okay, now it goes down quite dramatically as the views go up because that's what the formula is. It's like, you know, once you understand the data points from there, you know, and then he'll, he'll hover around the, you know, 26% mark and, you know, whatever they're going from there. But it's like, it's, it's a pretty interesting dynamic of how things operate. And, you know, that's why I kind of put it in the book of, hey, you got to understand people and YouTube has given us the greatest tools in the history of social media to understand if your content's performing or not. And I wanted to be able to show you where you should put your emphasis because there's too many gauges, there's too many bells and whistles, there's too many graphs, there's too many things. And sometimes you need someone to, to really uh, pull back the curtain and says, look, don't focus on these other things, focus in on these things. And that's where part three of the book uh, really comes in handy because I literally just tell you, no, don't, don't look at this, look at these things. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, a trap that people often fa fall into, myself included, um, in, because there's a lot of resources on out, out there is they take kind of a search only approach you know they, they see amazing tools like tubebuddy or vidiq which are super helpful but then that that becomes the only tool that they rely on and so they instead of focusing on their audience and engagement they're focusing on only search so can you tell us a little bit more about why that is kind of a faulty approach point um I don't think it's a faulty approach. Um, I think that it's a approach, you know, and there's some content that performs really well. But um, if you only focus in on search, then s some people manually have to go and find you. And when you do it that way, um, you're missing out on a lot of views. And so I actually had a consult the other day and a guy, uh, you know, had some recent success because I was able to help him on another consult. But before he was grinding away for two years and was only getting 38 to 100 video views uh, per video. And then some of them would get up to a couple thousand, but it would take a year to do that. And he's like, I just can't figure this thing out. This YouTube's too tough. It's like, whatever, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, you realize that 75% of all views that happen on YouTube today Today is when YouTube finds the viewer for you. And he says, nah, I'm like, yeah, that's the way it is. Like that's the, the whole system and it's actually going higher. So why wouldn't you want to leverage that? And, and he goes, well, I don't know how because my content is only made for search. I says, well, that's where you're wrong. Okay. So what you want to do is what I taught him to do is, you know, get that video that would really go well in search. Okay. 
but you're not necessarily treating that video for search. You're basically saying, okay, someone's going to discover this in search. How am I going to make sure that they get to the end of the video? Okay. And you're thinking about them. They might have a problem. They're going to find you in search. You know, they might see something and they didn't find you in search. Right. And so they're searching you out. The difference would be is as you're taking it through the, the video, you need to be right on point, bring as much value as you possibly can. You need to give them exactly what they're needing. The title and thumbnail needs to be able to engage in that first minute, you know, needs to reinforce that title and thumbnail. And then at the very end, you make a video and this is what you do before you make that video on search. And he's like, what could bring the most value to the person that found me through search on this video? And let's give them a different video. And that's a video that's geared for the person that finished all the way through that first video. And you told them at the end of it, hey, I know you've been struggling with this and this we solved this issue, but you really need to watch that. And when you do that and it's in harmony, then that's where you have, actually have growth. Now, the reason why is if if you, let's just, just use example of, you know, um, and, and you could throw out any example that you want, but I'm going to give you one, you know, how do you uh, replace a door handle, right, on, on your door? Okay, whatever. It's super simple, right? So I, I, I would literally title it, how would you replace a door handle? Okay. Um, you can go through your SEO tools and then there might be a, another question that would be interesting, but then I would have something that's showing you replace the door handle, maybe before and after thumbnail. Okay. And then I'm like, right in the first, uh, literally five seconds of the video. So I'm going to teach you how to do it, replace your door handle because that's what they're doing. Right. And you give them the whole value and you try to speed it up as much as possible. Right. So that they're not wasting time. And at the end of the video, it says, Hey, um, before you install your door handle, I'm going to give you five tips that you need to understand before doing that. You can actually do that in this video. And I'm here to tell you that anyone that completed with the video that says, hey, here's five tips or techniques that you didn't get here, they're going to watch that other video. And now you actually have a suggestion. And what happens is YouTube's able to see it. Everyone that watches this one, you might have only like 6% or 10% or 20% of the people that finish it watch this other video. Well, guess what magically shows up? as the next up when people are watching that video, that other video. And then you actually trigger suggestion. And so like, you gotta think about people. It's about people, right? It's not about you, it's about people. And now we understood that people are trying to find something and they found you through search. And then when they got to it, you gave them the tips and techniques of what they need to do. It could even be, here's five places to get it super cheap for door handles. You know that they're gonna do it by a door handle because it broke and you're giving them a value proposition. And before you know it, you can go through suggestions. So we actually <clears throat> partner with two channels every year. Um, and then we start two new, new, new YouTube channels. And um, what I told you about this guy that came on and was struggling for years, well, his channel got more video views on that second video, the second one that he made in that series, than all his views combined for the last two years. But he did it in like 10 hours. You're like, well, how does that work? Well, what happened is he get, did a good video that showed up in search and they had the suggestion. And then YouTube says, oh, this is recommending. So let's go ahead and put that on all ones that made it because there's this is really good for this topic. And then it also showed up, the, the first original one showed up in Google search and it brought a lot of traffic in. Now, that being said, you're like, okay, that's great. And it's an older channel, but a new one, we actually started a brand new channel in January, January 13th. Our first goal was to have that first video that we made show up in search, but we brought so much value in it. We wanted to make sure the second video was the most amazing video that we've ever made in the history of all mankind. And it needed to be on par for that search. What happened to the channel? Well, just in a few weeks of launching the channel, we had a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours watched. Now, what does that mean? We actually became a YouTube partner. Well, what does that mean from there? Well, we actually now have well over 30,000 subscribers and it's like growing at a massive rate. And that first video that we did through, through search, the number one traffic sources in search is in fact, it's not even on the top five because now YouTube understood who that audience is and is giving them that. The, that that's where the massive growth is. Mm -hmm. And so you can trickle traffic in, but if you're only a resource channel that's just ranking for search and you're not seeing the value that you can bring in um, to get them to watch more and more videos, then you provided the value. YouTube already says, okay, that's the only thing. And they're not really gonna go search that, 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 that viewer for you because there's no value in it because the value that you're bringing is when someone searches you out, they can find a video and you, you're providing that value. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, uh, 
and there there's there's so much value in that you could continue to unpack there and that's that's one of my favorite things about the book is that there's some high level themes but it gets down into the details and the nitty gritty um that we may not be able to you know spend the next 12 hours like your other live stream uh, <laughs> dig, digging into which i don't know how you did that daryl that was pretty amazing <sighs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I, yeah, I'm crazy sometimes. So, yeah. well, the best ones usually, usually are. Uh, so then when it comes to creating engaging content, right, Pete, cause you, you want to create content that hooks people and then keeps them watching, which we know that Mr. Beast is a master of, uh, his, the editing. I just, anytime I watch one of his videos, cause that was kind of my thing growing up was I loved editing. Anytime I watch one of his videos, I just, I can't imagine just, I, I, well, I have to guess there's an editor somewhere that just doesn't leave a room. Like he's just, he, they well, bring him a let, food let's, tray. Let's, let's make it clear. He has multiple editors. There's no right. way one person can pull it off. Like, <laughs> right, like, just, like, like some videos, like the last uh, tag video. I mean, he had yeah. 14 cameras going and you have wow. to think about it. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, wow. Think, that puts it in context. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> right. Exactly. But when it, from the perspective of let's say a you screen customer who also has a youtube channel you know they might be creating content to educate whether they're doing fitness uh how to train your dog or it could be something more formal like a, a normal classroom type setting with that that type of instruction what kind of tips do you have for people making that kind of content that may be a little bit dry and how do you take that and increase the and the engagement and the entertainment value without losing the instructional value that comes with it? I I don't think you force something that's not there. Um, you're either you're either an edutainer or not. Okay, and um, it, it 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 is what it is. Now I can honestly say that there are people that are the most dry that I watch every single time because their delivery is just on par, you know? Um, and there's there's a, a channel, a YouTube channel out there. It's called Cold Fusion. I'm a big fan of it. And it, it, like, there's not entertainment in it. It's just value of learning. And the way that, they, I just know that they're gonna be very thorough on a specific subject, you know? And when you watch it, like I was watching one, you know, a couple of weeks ago on NFT, like it literally, I knew exactly what NFT was and everything that it has to do. And then I saw the capabilities of all that. I wouldn't have known that, but it was done in a way that was, was actually bringing value to me through education. So don't think that you have to be, Oh, we're doing these really crazy mean cuts and all that other stuff. Like get out of here. Like get, <laughs> don't even do that. Come on. You know, what you mean to do is realize, Hey, the viewer, what they're coming for is to be intellectually charged, right? They want to learn. They're just a learner. They're an active learner. You can grow with that, right? You can grow in all these different comp uh, components, but you don't necessarily need to be that. You just need to realize, hey, it's about the viewer. And can we actually provide what the viewer wants? And if when you're doing that and you're fulfilling with that, that, that value proposition and you're able to knock it out of the park every time you watch a video good luck trying to get that person not to watch your next video yeah. regardless of what it yeah. is because they know oh i'm going to learn something from them even when you have no desire to learn what that topic is but you're like no they're going to deliver it in the way and i'm going to actually discover something i don't even know like come on like that that's that's what it's about and i think the the arrogance that we have sometimes as creators I create content and everyone deserves to, you know, see my content. And this is the way that it's going to always be and always will be, you know, let's get away from that and just say, you know what, let's see it. Can we bring value to someone? Um, and if that value is to someone, YouTube will figure out the someones that are actually in the quantity of, you know, either thousands, tens of thousands or millions or tens of millions. You know, you just have to have that value proposition. But I can tell you, um, not every piece of content is mainstream. You know, you use Mr. Beast. He's a mainstream creator. Like that's just, it's going to get, you know, a bajillion video views. Like he had a billion video views this last month. You know, yes, that happens. But that's not where all the money's at either. You know, very hyper-focused can can actually engage. And I, I'm telling you, um, the more that you understand the value proposition and that you're providing that in, in a video form, that's that's game over because then you actually have a loyal viewer and the loyal viewer is an active viewer 
And then if you get enough of those that actually are active viewers, YouTube goes out and finds the rest of active viewers just like them. And that's where you go. Now, the biggest mistake, I want to tell you what the biggest mistake is, is, and I've, I've put it in the book several times, but I just want to just make sure everyone hears this. The worst thing in the world you can do is, is, hey guys, I put a YouTube video out here. Go, go give me some support. Subscribe guys on your friends, your family, your mom. I don't care. But what happens is you're sending people over that are not interested in supporting your content. They're just interested in supporting you for about 32 seconds. Cause that's what usually happens, you know, and they don't come back. And so you literally confuse the algorithm of what's actually happening. Right. And so I would rather say, Hey, maybe my first approach is through search or a great collaboration that someone can push and promote, but I don't want to just put it out there for the public. I don't want to put it out there for, for all the Facebook peeps out there, the Twitter peeps or all whatever. I just want to make sure that I can bring enough value to someone that even if it's 10 people and I, I of those 10 people, I can guarantee you if they watch a video and you release it, that they're going to see it on the homepage. Their homepage will have your next video. Now, the most important thing is, is since they watched it, can they click on it? And it better be ding intriguing. And if you got two videos and those 10 people turn into 20 people or 30 people and you're, you're growing that, that is natural growth. And that actually occurs. Now, I have found um, the, the fastest channel outside of not, not having another channel to push, um, you know, to, to a million subscribers took 28 days. Um, and what happened was there was a subgroup on Reddit that already just was passionate about something. And, and the third video got shared in a, a subreddit. And in 28 days, they had a million subscribers. And, you know, right now, hundreds of millions of video views a month because they're fulfilling a need to a passionate group. Now, I've seen that go long until people figure it out. My favorite one was an example that I use is one of my partners, the partner in, in VidSummit is Sean Duras. Um, he made thousands of videos and it wasn't until I, I was telling him, it's, you got to understand your audience, you understand your audience. So he was like the cool person that does skate, you know, skate videos and do Casey Neistat and go to the cool parties. But the moment that he goes, you know what? I, I'm a dad and I, I just want to do dad stuff. I want to showcase my life, but you know, with my kids and my family, his channel exploded. Like it just exploded. And that's the whole thing is once you understand who your audience is, he was trying to make his audience into something that, that he wasn't. And he was always a great dad, you know, and he always was engaging with it. But once that came in, that's when he actually had, I mean, you know, 300 million video views a month. I mean, just bang, 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 because he was that fun dad that everyone wants to hang out with. Man, this this has been so good. And Daryl, I want to be respectful of your time and everyone watching. I know it's later in the afternoon for a lot of us. Uh, so I'd love to move into just a couple minutes of Q&A, uh, grab some questions. Hey, uh, um, I don't have anything after this. Like, I mean, I okay. want to go home and have dinner and, <laughs> and stuff important. like that. But I will stay on as long as you guys want to be on. And so, like, if they kick off early, you can blame them, not me, okay? <laughs> Perfect. I'll listen. I'll DFG's like, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that blame. But we would love to do some QA. Uh, yeah, so let's go, go ahead, it. start dropping some questions in the chat. And while we're waiting for some of those to come in, I actually just to thank you all for being here today. Like I said, we're going to do a giveaway. Uh, I actually want to give away 10 copies of Daryl's book Ooh. to people that are watching this right now. Uh, all you're going to have to do to enter the giveaway is make sure you're subscribed to this channel, Daryl's channel, and then I want you to leave a comment below this video and let us know the the one thing that you learned today that really stuck out with you and that you're going to take into your next video creation or your next video strategy session. So subscribe to this channel, Daryl's channel, leave a comment below. And then about 24 hours or so from now, we'll pick 10 random winners and you'll need you'll want to check back in for your YouTube notifications because we'll uh, we'll probably reach out to you that way in the comments. And uh, we would love to get 10 copies into the hands of great. people who want to use these books. So we'd love to have that. Now, we can, we'd can we love to get to some questions. I know Esteval was asking a question. He actually asked one before because we collected some questions before this started. And he mentioned, I have an old channel I've used over the years to drop some content almost 3,000 subscribers. Uh, I talk mainly about Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, should I start another channel from scratch or just upload new videos on my old channel? 
Daryl, what do so, you think about that? Um, first off, Esteval, I'm going to give you a signed copy of the YouTube formula. I'll send it to the team over there um, just because you're cool and you have the first question. So let's do that. And then you can give away 10. Does that sound good? Awesome. Um, I love it. And, 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 and I think the next thing would be is I get this question a lot. And based off of your name, I, I assume that you're either Brazilian or you speak Portuguese or something like that. Um, and so I don't know if it's if, if it's in your native tongue or if it's in a, you know, an English channel or what. I, I have no idea. OK, so but let me let me just kind of give you a, an essence. And then I want to I always like to share opportunity if, if we can do that. Um, but let me share the opportunity first. OK, and, and I do this um, just out of really understanding culture and people. The fastest growing market in the world right now is Brazil. It is craving for content. So whatever you do, think, think, think that if you speak Portuguese, if not, even if you don't speak Portuguese, then, then forget it, but tell someone that does because they're, they're, they're salivating for content. Now, the, answering your question, what do you do? Do you re-energize a new channel? Do you start a new channel? What do you do with old content? Do you prune content or whatever? What I just say is just start. I don't care where you start, just start. Um, I would rather start a, you know, YouTube channel that has some subscribers than zero subscribers because it's harder. It, it literally is. So maybe you have 5,000 subscribers. I don't know, you know, but I, I want it to be fresh, you know, and when it comes in, don't expect a lot because if they're not active viewers or active subscribers, then guess what? They don't, they don't uh, really respond to it, but YouTube will actually push it out to some people. And based on that, that first initial test, it'll go out to more people. Okay, so I would rather have it go that way because a brand new channel, it doesn't get much love. Okay, it, it just doesn't. And so you have to do the approach I was talking about before where you're you're doing it through search because that's a great visibility point and you know that you can rank in search. You just got to figure out what that is. And then you know the, the next video has to be really, really good when it comes to um, you know providing the value that I talked about. Now, there's another way to do it is like, you can start it and you might have a, an opportunity with someone with an email list that's really your target uh, viewer. You can have them come on and see that first video. You can have an influx of new viewers coming in. That's really great too, but don't expect a lot in your next video unless you have something that they, they can watch next, right? So it's just really, just really producing content and thinking of the viewer. And um, I've, I've literally had channels that were super stagnant wasn't growing at all. You just have to be consistent in, in creating the content and then getting people to watch and come back and watch more. And yeah, I, I found that you can do it either way. So. Awesome. Uh, next, we actually got a question about this in the chat a so little bit if, earlier. If I give you the book, uh, PJ, if I send you the book, would you make sure that he gets it? I have no idea who, who this guy is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll reach out to uh, um, Esteval. And, Book. Oh, and he's he's Brazilian. So please, uh, Brazil is the fastest growing market ever. And I'm telling you, they're just salivating for content. And like whatever you're doing, if you're doing anything in English, please do something in Portuguese on a different channel and target the heck out of Brazil because you will grow. I've seen people literally start with zero and they have, you know, five million subscribers. And like we're talking like six months. And Brazil is so huge. It's like, like, I don't think people realize the size of Brazil unless you've been to Brazil or you, you've lived down there. And I, I used to live in Paraguay, so I know exactly how big Brazil is. And I've traveled to Brazil quite a few times, but huge market, huge opportunity. And they, they don't got hardly anyone making content. So take, take, take me up on that. And then you can thank me later when you pick me up in your Lambo, we can go to dinner or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Esteval, you can send me an email at daniel at uscreen.tv. And I will be sure that you get that copy of the YouTube formula in your hands. So, uh, sure, sure. Daniel, great, if you don't mind, you. I'll pick up the next question if that's okay with you. Absolutely, go for it, PJ. Awesome. All right, so we got one from STE Media, and Daryl, this comes up often. Most or a lot of Uscreen customers have YouTube channels, and we love that. So the question from STE Media is. Please explain a suggested process of effectively leading viewers off the platform, the YouTube platform, to the Uscreen platform um, without upsetting the YouTube algorithm. What's your advice on that? Very simple. Um, so you want to make sure that whatever you're doing to lead people off is sporadic. Okay, you can't do that every video. You do it every video, YouTube will hose you because they're seeing, oh, wait a minute. 
every video that this person's creating on their channel is terminating that viewership because remember they want uh, the long longevity of people having on the platform because the longer they're on the platform the more youtube makes money right so if you're terminating that every single video then just buy ads because you know th that's you're pretty much host on that like they're never going to grow you to an extensive amount because they're basically saying, you know what, you're just you're just pushing people off the platform, and that's that, that's that's a sign that it's looking at. So what I do is, if you put out one video a week, okay, and you're one video a week, uh, that's four videos uh, roughly a month. Um, one of those videos can send them off platform. Everything else should just stay and refer to another video on the platform because that's what you need to do, okay. And so um, th sometimes that's too much. Um, it just depends on your viewership and so on and so forth. Sometimes I do it like every five or sixth video. Um, you know, it just really depends. But I found that if you, you do it every fourth video, um, you, you'll be okay. Um, you know, you just need to make sure that there's a lot of interaction before then. I think that's great. Thank you for that. We have a, a lot of um, customers who ask this question of us, especially on the marketing team. So I appreciate that insight, Daryl. Um, Liam asked, Daryl, what was your biggest failure that ended up being a key factor in your success? Now, I don't know if they mean career wise or, you know, just a video that comes to mind, but I'd be interested in the answers to both of those questions. Uh, I know this is going to shock Liam, but I've never failed ever in my life <laughs> ever. And I, I'm serious. I've just done stuff wrong and I've learned from that. Like I just, that's my process. I plan, execute. And when it doesn't happen just right, I analyze why. And I just know that that's just the wrong way of doing it. That's not failure. That's just learning. That's the wrong way of doing it. <laughs> so I like, I know that this seems weird and you've heard that like, you're like, okay, well, this is crazy. But seriously, I just, I just learned that, okay, if I do it this way, that's the results that I'm going to get. And if you'll analyze and adjust, that's where you can actually grow. And I, I have literally found the wrong way to do things a lot. I do it on every project, but you just, it's the tenacity, never giving up. It's just really trying to, to, to digest, you know, what, what went wrong uh, with your plan and then fix that. And that's the, actually the YouTube formula, plan, execute, analyze, and adjust. That is actually the scientific formula too. You have, you know, hypothesis and you create a plan and you, you go execute on that. And then you realize, oh, it didn't work out that. So you adjust that. I mean, that's how we have light bulbs. <laughs> that's why I have, it's just, that's the way I look at it. And I know um, like some people would just really um, get frustrated if they're always just hitting the wrong way of doing things. But once you realize, oh, no, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay because it's, it's not that process. It's just making tweaks. The small tweaks makes the biggest difference. And I just, it, you never know. It's just that small little, you know, analyzation of, oh, this didn't happen. What if we change that, that you're able to see some of the biggest peaks on YouTube. And I, I've seen that over and over again. And so um, that's just been the story of my life. And that's kind of the way that I view things. It's just easier to sleep at night too, because then I don't have to believe that I'm a failure and I just, that I'm able to be successful. But if you really look at the detail of what I've been able to do in, in my career, um, then you're going to be able to say, oh, okay. That's why he's able to do all these crazy things because he doesn't give up. He just sets his, his sight on prizes, you know, that finish line. And he figures out how to get to that finish line. And that sometimes you have to do a bypass around or you need to bring people on to get to that other way. So. Yeah, I think you actually quoted Thomas Edison in the book. I did. I've never, I've never failed, but I have found ten thousand ways not to do something. Exactly. I think is great. And somebody explained. I, it I don't really once. like his character, like Thomas Edison, as being a historian. <laughs> like I don't. Yeah. But that quote hits it out of the park. It's a great right? quote. So. <laughs> yeah. Somebody once explained it to me as when you make a wrong turn and you're driving somewhere, you don't just when you realize you've made a wrong turn, you don't just stop your car where you are and sit there right. for a long time. You keep right. going and you figure it, figure it out and you get back on path. So yeah, I think that's a, and sometimes a you got to stop to right. analyze what just happened too. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Nicholas asked, how do you source ideas for videos? Now I love this idea. Um, I, I believe this is a skill set that anyone can learn, but you have to be able to learn how to brainstorm. 
And I go through the process in the book of how I go through it. But every if, if I if I don't create in a brainstorming session, um, I become still and stagnant. Like you always got to think well, something bigger, something greater, something whatever. And um, every every day I, I spend time to brainstorm. And you can do this. And I teach it in the book. But that that's where every idea comes in. Now, I'm a visual idea guy. So you'll see myself going into stock photos or Google images or Reddit because there's something that sparks some some idea and, you know, go from there. So we actually, uh, let, let me give you some context. Like six years ago, we broke the world record for the largest live nativity in, in the world. And um, we also broke the record of the largest collaboration in the world. Um, and what we did is we, we did this all in three weeks, by the way. We flew out Guinness Book World Records. We was doing this huge uh, music video with the piano guys. We had all this stuff that was going on. Well, how the idea started was I watched a video and it was an OK Go video. And it was one of the coolest things ever. And it was they had this shot. It's like a it was like a one shot thing. It was very well choreographed. And it kind of comes up and did this like a drone view. And it had just it was just synchronized. It was just like one of the coolest videos of all time. And I'm like, man, that's so cool. I wonder if we could do something like that. And as I was brainstorming, it came into, hey, that's our last shot on this 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 idea for this uh, music video. And we could do it in, in a way, you know, where it could be lit up. It wasn't ripping them off by no means, but it was like it, it was an element that, that that led into this whole this whole idea that we were able to pull off. And it led to breaking the world record. It led to doing the biggest YouTube uh, uh, YouTube collaboration ever, um, and it, it was just great, you know. And it was it was a fun project. But so I'm more visual, and so you'll see me going through Google Images on Reddit. You'll see me seeing a lot of memes. You'll see me, you know, going through stock photos. You know, just just whatever just grabs my attention, and I'm able to go, okay, boom, boom, boom. And then I also look at YouTube homepage trending, and it gives me ideas and variations and stuff like that. So that's awesome. That's great. Um, Brenda Medina, who I believe is a client of ours, she asked, uh, her channel used to grow a lot and now it seems to have stopped growing and she doesn't know what to do. So I think yeah. her question is, what now? So, um, Brenda, so I noticed that your yoga and based off of your image, I, I see a lot of skin and, 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 and that's okay, you know, in, in that world. But um, there might be a couple things. So there's a thing called, uh, you know, shadow banning. And there's another thing, uh, you know, where it's age gated, where it doesn't go from that content. I'm not saying that your content is that. That is a possibility if it just stopped. If you can go back to a time and it just tanked, there's something that occurred there. Okay. Now, whether we like it or not, or like, I don't want to even go for like self-expression or anything else like that or whatever. I just, I just didn't ever go down that route. Um, I just like try to figure out what happened there. The best way to look at it is go into your analytics and see your traffic and be looking at your traffic and notice where the traffic stops. And so it could be that, um, you know, your video ranking in, in search just got hosed. Could be, it could be that you weren't being suggested by other channels that's out there that got hosed. Like I would see where that was at. And then I would start making the, the question, okay, what, what happened there? And I try to try to define it, it like um, I, and then, too, if you want to see if you're shadow bound, just go in incognito mode and try to find one of your videos. And you, it might be a, a video that was bringing most of the, the views. What I found is this. And this is this is truth. Um, where your traffic come from, there's something got disrupted. So whether it's in search, whether it was one video that was just mega video that was bringing all the suggestions, it could have been that I've seen that time over and over and over again. Um, or you might have been less sporadic and now YouTube's recommending another YouTube channel because you're not as consistent of getting loyal people there. Uh, but more importantly, you might have been sending them off platform very consistently. I don't know. Just see what happened. And I would go back through that and you could pretty much see um, where that's at. Now, does that mean you're hosed? No, that means you just need to analyze and adjust. OK, now you understand that. Then it's a new plan to re-engage and go from there. That's great. Uh, Little Dancer's Life said, we haven't begun to load content onto our YouTube channel yet. What would you advise is the best way to start? Short, long content, any other kind of tips or advice for somebody just starting? Um, I, I don't know. Is it? I, I would assume that you're um, teaching dance techniques. I don't know. Based off of your, your content, I don't know what it is. But it really depends on who you're going after. Um, if it's short, 
like shorts, like that'd be under a minute in vertical format, or it could be short form content that could be, you know, whatever, <laughs> or long form could be whatever too. It's just the length of, of time. I would just try to figure out who's going to be watching it and, you know, what's their tolerance uh, to go. So if you're getting an ADD person that is a Gen Zer to sit through a 39 minute tutorial on dance routines, good luck on that one. You know, but if it's, you know, someone that would, um, you know, it's just how passionate are they? So let me just give you my my son as an example. My son is obsessed with basketball. He plays basketball for five hours a day. He literally does. He practices and practices and practices. He wants to be in the NBA. So he's he's focusing on that. And I think he, anything that he sets his mind to, he can do. Um, I, I truly do believe that. OK. And so um, he, he eat, drinks, sleeps basketball. OK. He will sit through. Um, you know, a 38 minute uh, video to how to improve his basketball game, because that's what he wants to do. And in fact, I actually bought him, um, you know, these coaches that they all came together. It's like Steve Kerr and all these people coming together, teaching, you know, basketball principles and fundamentals. Well, where is he at watching that? He's watching it, doing the, the exercises and, and all the other uh, things that he needs to out on our basketball court. And so, you know, it, it, if they're into it and they're really passionate about it, of course, they're going to go longer form. And so you just got to see who's watching it and where. And if you haven't started, that's where I would put a lot of research and energy into understanding your your target, uh, you know, avatar, your target avatar viewer. Um, I would 100 percent like, could you give her the book to like make, make sure that one of the 10 could we just. I'll give you a book. I'll, I'll send two books. So you don't have to worry about the 10 because like in that, like the, I go through uh, viewer persona and it's like, you know, who are they? The demographics, the psychographics, what they do online, what they do offline. And once you understand that, then you can say, okay, here's the, the value um, that you're able to bring. And, and let's go ahead and do that. So I promise you the book, would you make, make sure you send, um, you know, Daniel, your, your, your information. So I owe you two books. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Email me, Daniel at uscreen.tv and we'll, uh, we'll get that. I mean, if I keep on giving away books, nobody's going to buy the book, but anyway, let's do it. You need well, it. <laughs> I, I told you I'm committed. I'm going to buy, we're going to buy uh 10 for some people there on the stream. So there we go. You'll at least get that. And I bought this with my own money. So. All right. That, I'll, see? You can bust PJ for that. That's right. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a couple more questions and then I really, I know Daryl wants to get home and eat with his family and we've all got things to get on with, but, uh, ed, this question, edutainment, very effective. So is pure focus. Do you think they should always be separate or could we start light and then kind of dig down into the grid? Um, like it's, it's all, I know I've said this like six times now, but it's all about the viewer. It's like, you know, there's some people that just come across as funny, you know, and why do you want to be focused if they come across as funny, if they're lighthearted, it's the personality, then leverage that because there will be a certain audience that will really engage with it. But I, I, I do believe, and this is just kind of a fundamental thing, I do believe that God made every person different and they need to leverage their their gifts that he's given them. And so just like, figure out what that is. And, and go from there. So I'm not, I, I'm not 100% like the, the focus, like you're only going to get dry information from me and only accurate. Now I, I liven it up. I like to tell stories, all of that other stuff. That's what, what God made me. And that's the way I'm going to do it. And so I'm just leveraging that. Now I do believe <clears throat> that once you understand the viewer and once you understand the impact that you're actually bringing to, to them, you'll know how to speak to them because you know, I might speak differently when I'm with Gen Z and I do, I literally do. And they're kind of, Whoa, you know, man, he knows, he knows our lingo, you know, stuff like that. But, and then when I'm, when I'm talking to boomers, like my, my parents, like I totally speak a different way. Cause like you want to speak to the audience, you know, you don't want to say certain things that to my mom that you would just normally say to a Gen Z, you know, just, they wouldn't get it. Um, and, and it's pretty funny. I actually put uh, one of those examples you know, um, in, in the book where, you know, my, my son said it was dope. My mom thought that my, my teenager was doing drugs, you know? So it just like, it, it, it happens, <laughs> but it's, it's fun. It's great. I so. love that. And then we'll, we'll finish with this question. This one might be selfish from me, but I'm curious to see your thoughts on tips on increasing engagement and replay value of live streams. 
So um, I'm I'm a big live stream fan. I always have been. There was an awkward period on YouTube that it just didn't really facilitate. Like whenever YouTube creates a new feature, it just has awkwardness. Now it's well matured. And so live stream is amazing. Um, and what, what I do believe is you need to interact on the live stream like it's live, but you got to use it for evergreen. Like what's another way to do it? Um, we just did uh, uh, basically a season two launch of our TV show, The Chosen. Uh, which we hit a million subscribers, by the way. We just a million subscribers on YouTube. Like, what other TV show does that? Come on, come on. But anyway, um, we did a, a global live stream where we watched the first season together as a live stream. But the whole purpose of it was to have that content always be on YouTube, but packaged in a way that people can experience it together. So it was like, it was like something that we did afterwards. And what's interesting was. It, it, it took off and it got a ton of views and, and, you know, millions and millions of views on, on each one of them, but we're getting, you know, a ton of views right now. It's like, like literally the, the, the top five videos that we've had on YouTube ever. Um, and the reason why is because of the long-term tell effect. And we had people coming onto live stream going it, and then with their, it's not just like a, 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 an hour live stream it's like you know hour and a half sometimes two hours you know that they're watching per live stream and then two as people are coming and discovering it can go from there so with with that you got to say okay what is going to bring the most valuable thing and i think the worst thing that you can do is not think of that before you do the live stream because you want to be able to package it in a way that you can go from there and then i think the second thing would be cut out all the unnecessary moments that's why the youtube editor was existed you can only do it once don't save it as a new video but just like bring it down to the size you need to be um, you can cut out those elements and, and if you plan well enough you don't need to even cut it out because it's just really real impactful it's really well uh, thought out um, and people will consume longer form content and i do believe that it's just you just need to look at what it is and you experience it that way so i love that well, everyone, again, thank can we you give Nicholas a, a book? Because he says he loves The Chosen. Like, I get uh, it. Come on. Like, come on. Yeah, come on. Totally. You love my TV show. Like, I put a lot of hard work and effort into it. In fact, I love it. that's one reason why I don't put out a lot of YouTube videos because like, I'm doing too much of The Chosen right now. So, I love it. Yeah, I it's, it's it. a great show. Uh, uh, Daniel, before uh, we yeah. knock off the last, uh, before you wrap it up, can I ask Daryl one more question? All right. And then we're going to. We're gonna be all done here. It's it's your show, man. It's your dime. Go for it. <laughs> this one, this one is uh, Daniel's show or our show. So yeah, Let, let's. Yeah, like, okay. I, I I know who who pays Daniel's paycheck. So like, come on, <laughs> let's, let's figure this out here. Nice. So, right. Okay. Good. I got a I got an interesting one. Um, so TikTok is so engaging, so viral, so addicting. It gives you. Um, a lot of the information you need so fast. Like we spend 15 minutes watching a YouTube video or 10 minutes, eight minutes. Then you come on that TikTok and then within 30 seconds, you get a lot of value. Of course, there's a lot of missed out info. YouTube will always be a monster, it'll always be amazing. Um, and then YouTube launched YouTube Shorts. What are your thoughts on YouTube uh, or TikTok being a threat to YouTube? How does that change the landscape of video in general moving forward like in youtube's shoes right now how do they feel about tiktok i think you know where i'm getting yeah so um i i'm a um like i said i'm a historian i like to watch people and i always look at where the rising generation is going and um like the biggest competitor at youtube before tiktok was f actually video games and um and i know that even uh, Netflix says, Hey, we don't see anyone as a competitor except for video games. Cause it's like, where, where's the competing time for the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and, um, I started to notice a trend and I actually told this before anybody thought it was going to take off. I said, Hey, this, this is going to be the number one app bar none. It's just, it's very, very engaging. It's providing value. It's what YouTube was when it first started out, which is putting creation in the hands of everyday people, right? And it makes it easy for them to do it. And then two, what I noticed was two things, um, that their, their artificial intelligence would help them make better videos. So they actually have editors, but they use artificial intelligence to help you make the best videos possible, which was a huge breakthrough. And I said, okay, it just made the average person make amazing videos. Like that that right there, like who who wouldn't want that? 
And then two, um, and I, I got to be very careful because I'm under NDA, but um, I did a consult uh, before TikTok took off with TikTok specifically. And I was over in, in Singapore, met with your team over there, and it was very, very specific on their algorithm. And I'll be honest with you, I've, I've, I've seen algorithms left and right. I've lived uh, AI and algorithms. I've never seen anything like this. This is like like supercharged, like within within a few seconds of viewing on the platform, it's locked you in and it will provide you stuff that will cause emotion to hit. And the emotion either is in a positive or a negative light. It's never neutral. Right. Um, and, and so, and then two, the gamification uh, mo- uh, way that they do it, it's, it's, it's almost, uh, well, it is, it's, it's human programming. And so it scares the heck out of me. I'll be honest with you, because just the way that people get sucked into it and I'll, I'll lose hours just going onto these videos and, you know, where it takes me and all that other stuff. And so it's a huge, huge rabbit hole. Now, that being said, um, you know, this is the future of content, whether we accept it or not, because mm. Gen Z would rather do that. Uh, but they'll still do the long form content. Don't get me wrong. When they want to watch a laser beam or a Lannan or something like that, Mr. Beast, for example, you know, they'll go there too. But like for that type of stuff, it's so easy to share. It's so easy to engage. You know, I'm sharing more TikTok videos than I am on YouTube. And that's just like a very odd thing coming from the YouTube guy that wrote the YouTube book. It's bestseller, by the way. But it, it's, it's, it's interesting. So you know what YouTube does when you can see where they spend the money. And they're putting a lot of resources in. Um, co- keeping content creators on YouTube and paying them to do short form content. They're paying them to improve and, and find a way that that everyday creators can make money on it to it as well. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on, but I will say this, that YouTube is petrified of it. And they're also, it's, there's going to be an awkward period because it's just disrupting the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And they're bringing in another feature and like, how do you even view this? It doesn't even get picked up on the short shelf. There's a lot of awkwardness that's going on and that will con- continue to exist. Um, but as that happens, TikTok will k- keep on gaining uh, viewership and, and so on. Um, and, you know, they, they will be a competitor in a lot of different ways, which is for eyeballs and attention. Um, and especially with, um, all demographics, because now all these other demographics are coming on to the platform and they're leveraging it and they're seeing success. Now here's the downfall. And let me tell you the downfall. If you do not post regularly on TikTok, then you literally go irrelevant. There's right. just no way to, to sustain. You always have to be mm-hmm. pumping up. Mm-hmm. There's, there's channels or there's, there's uh, creators on there that like 16, 20 times a day. And if they don't, they don't get the views and visibility that's there. Right. That's not sustainable from the creator. And that's why I was talking about how YouTube is more long form. It's going to be the dominant force ever because of that. Like you can, like I have videos today that are 13 freaking years old that are still getting thousands yeah, it's of so evergreen. That's a good point. It's just like, it, it just happens. Right. And the difference is, it, it, it is in a, in, a, in a format, and I think it's going to continue to evolve. And I don't think that there's uh, anything wrong with the other format, but it's like it, it's going to burn through creators um, just like what YouTube did in the beginning because they haven't learned from that. And then, two, uh, when they do learn from that, it's probably too late because it's just burned through so many creators that, you know, it's, it's going to be very hard unless you're really grinding away and you feel like you can't even take a vacation because you have to put out content. And there's no way to schedule it. I mean, I can go through a billion different things. Yeah, that's a really good point. There are one thing about YouTube that's absolutely amazing is the older the video, the better it does. Like, it's like magic. It's the old, the video sits there, it gets old. You think to yourself, oh, that video was two years old. But then you look at it, you're like, oh, my God, look at the views. So it's so evergreen. That's the amazing thing about YouTube. I never thought about this. I don't think TikTok does that at all, right? If you TikTok, you're scrolling it's through the fresh freshness, freshness factor is what yeah. it is. It's fresh. And and where it's put into average day viewers, it doesn't matter if you're if you're up and trending, you know, you know, somebody else is not going to be, you know, and then you know, it just depends on who's pumping out that fresh content. So it's all it's all about the trends. Like it, it is. It's like what's trending? Well, you're duetting this and you're doing that and you're going here. And we've we've gotten T- billions of views on TikTok, but it's it, like you can't even count it as a view. Like like a view is like like half a second. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, that's a view. <laughs> you got that? Where yeah. YouTube is? No, no, no. We're gonna see if they're actually engaging with it. You know, and so that that's a little bit different. And I I do believe it's misleading, but 
they have literally the best AI I've ever seen when it comes on social media to really bring people and sucking them in and then giving them stuff that they didn't even need, know that they needed, but they can profile you faster than any other al uh, algorithm I've ever seen. Wild. <clears throat> well, Daryl, where can people connect with you online and feel free to share any closing thoughts you have on our yeah, conversation? Like pretty much anywhere good daryl eves like d-e-r-r-a-l um you know you can find me that's my handle i'm on a, pretty much everything even tiktok but i don't post on tiktok but um yeah just do that or you can go to daryl eves.com or my youtube channel whatever but i think the the big thing for me is my why uh and you alluded to it a little bit earlier daniel but like for me um i i gravitate to make a, a huge impact and i i believe that you know, we're in the golden age of impacting the world. There's a lot of causes that's going on and there's a lot of great things. And I want to just better humanity. You know, I don't want to dumb it down. I don't want to take it to a path where, you know, it's like my children, my their children's children's is, is struggling. You know, I just want to make it a better place. And so I just want to leave it on this thought. Um, I actually volunteered for my church. Uh, when I was young, I was 19 years old. I went down to Paraguay, didn't speak Spanish, uh, didn't speak Guarani. Those are the languages there. I had to go and learn it. And um, I was in a remote jungle area region. And right then and there, um, I met this family and we would serve in the family and, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, man, these guys are never going to get ahead. Like they're not like the education system sucks. That's there. Um, they barely have enough necessities to survive, but they were one of the happiest people I've ever met in my life. I'm like, okay, at least they have that going for them, you know? And, and I was like looking at all their circumstances and fast forward, uh, con left and whatever, fast forward just a few years ago. And, um, I get this random text and it was on, it was a DM on Facebook and they're like, are you the Daryl Eves that was in Paraguay at this time? I'm like, yeah, I am. And he goes, well, I was that eight-year-old boy. <laughs> like, so we, we get on the, you know, we do talking over over the internet. And I'm like, what's what's going on, man? Like, I never thought in a million years I'd ever find you again and talk to you. And so we had these conversations. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm a, a computer programmer. I'm living in Uruguay. I'm like, wait, wait, wait how is this even possible? Because <laughs> like, you didn't even have running water or power, and yet you're a computer programmer. Did you go to school? Like, give me the story behind it. He goes, well, my, my, uh, got a job, you know, was going in and we wanted to have internet. And so we got the cell phone and we started, you know, just using that as entertainment. We'd watch videos or whatever. And here they're in the remote jungles of, of Paraguay. And he, he ended up getting on Stanford and MIT and Harvard and guest lectures on how to program. And he just was fascinated about it. He didn't even have a computer. He had a cell phone. Anything. So he'd write out programs. He'd program on, on written form. And he got, he was gifted in that. And YouTube videos taught him how to be a programmer where yeah. he's wow. making several hundred thousand dollars a year, was able to pull his family out of poverty. And they now live with him, but they pulled out of poverty because of YouTube. Like that right there, that's that's what I want. That's that's the that's the world that I want is is doing it. And then I want to give you one other one. Um, I, I just uh, got a consult with a guy and he, he does this 3D animation. And I'm like, holy crap, you're really good. Like, where are you from? He's like, Nigeria. I'm like, how did you learn how to even do this stuff? He's like, from YouTube, you know, the whole thing. I'm like, you're so good. Let me call up one of my clients. And I called up one of my clients. It was a previous client. It's Epic Games who makes Fortnite. I says, hey, I know you're looking for modelers. There's a guy in New, New, uh, Nigeria that would love it. Well, guess who got a job for Epic Games from Nigeria? You know, and he's making a ton of money now. But here, like the whole thing is, is like this is an amazing way to impact people. And the thing that I'm most excited about more than anything else is Starlink. Because now internet can go anywhere in the yeah. world. That's and people right. can have access to this. That's right. That that's a game changer. And and if you think that you're not on the forerunner, like you have your own app. If you're we using the system, you have your own app. That that's powerful. And anyone can yeah. any country can go and download it. Like that's come on. Point. It's come just on. the beginning. If you really look at it, Daryl, it's just the beginning, right? You could look at YouTube and say, "Wow, there's so much competition," but it's just the beginning. Would you agree? Yeah. I I do. I do. I do believe it. And I I look at just the the growth that a lot of your clients have had over the last little bit people yeah. literally couldn't go to the gym but yet they could go get fitness by whoever you know on their app or this or that i was just it, like look we're we're in a different world now 
That's correct. You know, let's accept that. Well, but I think the big thing for me is the reason why I love YouTube is because of those stories that happens every single day. Um, and, and I, I, I love it. I love it. And I, I just want to make the world a better place. And so please, whatever you're doing, be a net positive creator, please do. That means you're putting out more good than bad, like be a net positive. That's what the world needs now. So true. I love that. You're, you're preaching just then. I love it. So, um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful for your time, your expertise, your insight. We're all better for it. And everyone, again, don't forget, make sure you subscribe to this channel, Daryl's channel. You can check out PJ's channel in, in the description as well. He just started a new one and he's putting out some great contents. Check those out. Leave a comment. Let us know what you learned today. Um, we really love this conversation. PJ, thank you for joining us. Daryl, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you guys out there. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you, Thank you. everyone.